Hello and welcome to another episode of Relationship Alive. This is your host, Neil Satin. And the title of today's show is going to be something like A Little Bit of Honesty Goes a Long Way. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what I mean and why honesty and truth telling is so important in a relationship on so many levels. But before I do, I want to recap for just a minute because I had kind of something funny happen. If you listened to the episode that I did two episodes ago, so that would be episode 105, um, called something like A Small Thing That Can Make a Huge Difference, I was talking about the fractal nature of our lives and how the things that we do in our lives on a big scale often are mirrored in our lives on the tiniest scale. How you do the tiniest thing is often how you do the biggest thing. And so you can pick any point in your life and start making the tiniest changes, and then you can see those things ripple out into the rest of your life. Now, there's more to it than that. So if you haven't heard that episode, I definitely recommend that you go back and check it out. It was only two episodes ago, so you don't have to use your thumb. You don't have to do too many swipes with your thumb to get there. But one thing that was kind of funny about it is uh, last weekend or two weekends ago, I was texting with a friend of mine and and he was like, how's it going? And I was like, oh, we just decided to redo five rooms in our house all at the same time. And it's been crazy. And we did everything. And he texts me, what happened to the whole small fractal thing where you just do a tiny thing and it ripples out and through the rest of your life? And of course, I had to step back and laugh and um, also have a moment of gratitude that even my friends are listening to the show. Um, And and I thought it merited a little bit of explanation because, yes, that is what I said. Do this little tiny thing. You don't have to go through for the big changes. That being said, sometimes that little tiny thing can cause a massive shift. You know, I wanted to say avalanche, but that I'm not sure avalanche is really the metaphor that we want to go with here. Um, But those little things do add up until you get, all right, let's call it a snowball. So you get the little tiny bits of snow and you put it all together and eventually you get a big snowball and then you can make a snowman and snow forts. And for those of you who live in the South, sorry, this metaphor isn't working for you either. Um, Anyway, you get my drift. There's a lot that's possible by just making tiny changes. And for me, there were lots of tiny shifts. Actually, that whole thing started with, for me, with a simple commitment to not let any dirty dish remain in any part of the house other than on the counter, by the sink, or in the sink, or in the dishwasher. So that was the zone that I unofficially decided that's where dishes and glasses that have already been used can be. And if I saw one anywhere else in the house, I would just grab it and bring it to the kitchen. And I was doing that for about a week. And all of a sudden, I felt this surge of energy that happened to match with a surge that Chloe was also experiencing. Her mom happened to be visiting and they had decided that they were going to do some of the uh, the reorienting project here in the house. And so they already had some energy. And then that met for me this huge surge of energy that I had around just like finally tearing into it. If I had tried that before, I may not have had that enthusiasm to make it all happen for me, you know, Chloe and, and her mom, they probably had that enthusiasm already for the the part of the project that they already wanted to do. So that being said, it's a great example, not only of how, my, for me, my little bit of energy added up to this big change, but how that also joined forces with Chloe and her mom. And suddenly, we took on this enormous thing. And afterwards we laughed about it because 
any one of the things we did we could have procrastinated on for a long time. Or maybe if we had been lucky, we would have done that one thing. But as it stood, our whole house is different from one day of concerted effort and a ton of energy. So um, so it did happen um, all at once like that, but it did start with a tiny change. So now you know that you don't have to hold back. I mean, if you're feeling like doing something big, then go for it, you know. Um, but it can be those little tiny movements that lead to the big surge in energy. So that's that. And I thought you might like to know that. Also, I just wanted to say a little bit of gratitude here. Thank you. If you have already donated to help the podcast keep going, I'm so grateful for you showing that vote of support in what I'm doing here and what we're doing, because it's not just me. There are a bunch of people who help bring this whole show together, along with you, because maybe you've even sent in a suggestion for the show, and maybe that's found its way into the into Relationship Alive. So thank you so much for showing that support. And if you haven't yet and you're interested, if the show's been helpful for you, all you have to do is visit neilsatin.com slash support or you can text the word support to the number 33444 if you're here in the States and follow the instructions. And basically there are all kinds of options. You can choose something that feels right for you. And let me just say in advance, again, so appreciative of your help in ensuring that we can continue. Okay, so a little bit of honesty goes a long way. And this is a bit of a follow-up to episode 24. If you haven't listened to it yet, uh, that show is with Ellen Bader and Peter Pearson. They're married, and they are two of the leading couples therapists here in the States, and they also train a lot of couples therapists. And they wrote a book called Tell Me No Lies, which is all about why we lie in relationship, why we don't tell the truth. And this can be an outright lie, like um, like I tell you something that wasn't true at all, or it can be a lie, a white lie, like something that's kind of true and kind of not true or kind of purposefully vague, so you can't really pin me down on <laughs> whether or not it's true. And then there are lies of omission, the things that we don't say or don't tell and they're not asked of us and because they're not asked and we don't say them they go unsaid um, but even that can be a lie of sorts it can be an example of how we are holding ourselves back from relationship and there are a couple sides to this as there always are and this is something we talk about extensively in that episode and i hope to have ellen and peter back on the show sometime soon but we talked about how not only is there the courage required to be truthful and sometimes to tell truths that are challenging or difficult but on the flip side there's this question of do I, in relationship, do I invite the truth? Am I someone who punishes my partner for being truthful with me by making them feel my anger or by pulling away from them in sadness um, instead of saying staying connected to them in either my anger or my sadness or whatever it is that comes up? Do I invite the truth from them by being curious, by being willing to ask them the questions, even the uncomfortable questions, the questions where maybe I'm dying to know the answer, but there's something, there's some reason why I'm holding myself back from asking, or maybe there are questions where I'm a little scared to know the answer, and again, holding myself back out of fear from asking the question. The communication in relationship is is a dance. It involves both people. And if you've ever tried to dance with someone who's holding completely still, I can tell you that it's not that fun for the most part. Um, there are moments, I mean, sure, you could do an exercise where one person holds still and the other person dances, but for the most part, 
it only really works if both people are engaged. So which do you do? Or maybe I think we, we all have the capacity to do both, to either hold back or not be truthful, or on the flip side, to not necessarily be inviting our partners into a truthful relationship with us. So take this moment and just decide which one am I? What do I tend to do? Maybe you're perfect. And if you are, please keep listening because there may still be something here for you. But in case you're not perfect, just think like, am I, am I staying engaged with my partner? Am I asking them the hard questions? Questions that really make them dive deep within them? Or questions that speak to my fears and concerns when I ask those questions, do I ask them in a way that invites them actually telling me the truth instead of telling me what I want to hear? Have I, have I beaten my partner up when they tell me the truth? And I hopefully that's not true literally for you, but I mean that even like figuratively or emotionally. Do you, do you um, make it a problem for your partner to tell you the truth. Or on the flip side, ask yourself, am I holding back in some way? Am I holding back from offering what I know my partner wants to hear because I'm waiting to hear it from them first? Or am I holding back from telling my partner about my worries or fears because I'm afraid that they may be true? Now, of course, this kind of communication can be tricky and you want to really be fostering safety between the two of you in order to have these conversations. As a reminder, I have a free guide for you on some relationship communication tips that are specific to building safety in your relationship and how you communicate so that you can talk about challenging things, talk about amazing things, and feel more connected at the end of that. And if you haven't picked it up yet, you can grab it at neilsatin.com slash relate, or you can text the word relate to the number 33444 and follow the instructions. Now that guide is there for you to help you figure out how to do this safe communication with your partner around anything that's true for you. And honesty is a great place where if you haven't been fully embracing this in your relationship, then that's a, a prime time for when relationships can start to feel a little stale or like you're not getting what you want. Now, how do you expect to get what you want if one, if you're not willing to ask for it? But on top of that, if you're in an environment with your partner where you're always holding back for fear of what might happen um, if you asked for the truth or if you gave the truth, then you're basically pulling your energy away from your relationship. It's a, it's a classic exit from your relationship by withholding from your partner. Now, along with those secrets for communicating safely in relationship that I was telling you about a moment ago, there's also the question of, can you identify your truth in a way that it helps you build the connection? So classic example of this that you've heard me mention on the show is instead of coming to your partner with a complaint you're always home 10 minutes late, you know, or you never want to come to bed with me when I want to go to bed, whatever it is. Um, instead of coming to your partner with a complaint, a you never or you always or you anything, see if you can speak your complaint as a request. So I would love it if we could come up with a way for you to be here on time at night. Or 
it would be so amazing if we could work together to figure out a way so that we could have some time in bed together at the end of the day. Those are just a couple examples, and those are off the top of my head. You want to tweak it to what fits your situation, of course. Um, but the whole point is for you to spend that time so that you're not just blurting out the truth. It's not like you, you don't want to bludgeon your partner with the truth. You want to speak the truth in a way that offers kindness and connection and that offers some possibilities. Uh, one thing that Harville Hendricks and Helen LaKelly Hunt talk about, and by the way, they are going to be on our show next week, so stay tuned for that. Another visit from Harville and Helen. Great conversation. They have a technique that they call the behavior change request, which is about going through all of your complaints about your partner and turning them around into specific requests. And one thing that they suggest that works really well is to come up with three or four different requests that all could potentially fulfill the same need. So if your partner actually granted any one of those requests, you'd feel good inside and give them the choice. Now you might ask them for their commitment, like here are a few options. Would you be willing to commit to just one of these? And that makes it manageable for your partner so that they're not feeling overwhelmed by all the things that you want them to do. If things go well, you have a long time ahead of you so that over time you can make adjustments or make new requests or hear your partner's requests and show up for them. Um, this is a great way for you to actually build energy in your relationship because the more that you actually feed your relationship with honesty, the more juice and energy and vibrancy there is for you because you're there in the moment. If you can have some trust that no matter what you're being honest about, you are there for each other, then wow, you can speak something and feel the electricity between you and your partner. Again, I'm not saying just go and have a free-for-all. And this is where a little honesty can go a long way. And it's building on the small changes that I was mentioning from that earlier episode. First thing you can do is just notice in your life which side of that equation you're on. Or if you're like most of us and on both sides of that equation, just notice the times like, oh, that's a time where I punished my partner for telling me the truth. Or, oh, that's a time when I uh, wasn't fully truthful or I told a, a little white lie or that wasn't entirely true what I just told them. So notice all of those moments when they are happening in your life. Hopefully there aren't too many of them, but there may be. It depends on how far down that road you've gone. So step one is notice them. Step two is to see if you can identify a certain kind of non-truth or half-truth or omission of truth that you do over and over again. And you may not even have to like sit back and observe yourself. You may know from years of observing yourself exactly what that is. Like, oh, I always tell um, my partner that I'll be right there when the truth is that it may be a half an hour before I'm there. So why don't I say I'll be there in a half an hour instead of saying I'll be right there and then having them wonder where the hell I am for a half an hour. This example is from my own life because I'm that is classically what I do. Be right there, Chloe. And, you know, I get caught up in something and I'm not there. So what's something that you normally do? And then see if then you can make that small adjustment to your life where when that kind of thing comes up, you stop yourself and you deliver the actual truth. 
Um, I see that you want me there right now, and I can only be there in 30 minutes. Um, I have to wrap up these things. Are you angry? I'm sorry. You know, there's there can be more to the conversation. Um, and that's part of the point. It's that when you hold back the truth, then what you're actually doing is on the flip side, you're creating disconnect and anger. So you're actually fostering that in your relationship by withholding the truth or by encouraging your partner to withhold the truth from you. So as you add honesty into the relationship, I'll be there in 30 minutes and that's something I can commit to. Well now, if you don't live up to your commitment, Neil, then you have some consequences maybe around that, but it's real. And if you can live up to your commitment, but your partner is a little frustrated with you because you're not coming right away, then you, then you have something real to deal with. That could be anger that they're carrying around that's about something completely different anyway. So there may be deeper issues at work that ultimately you have to address. The point is that by opening the door even a crack, and sh letting the light of honesty shine through into the darkness where you are, you're going to give yourself so many more opportunities to have real interactions with your partner about real things that are really important to you or really important to them. And now you're gonna be in a culture of things that are important and meaningful instead of a culture that shies away from those things because they make everyone too uncomfortable. Now, one last thing. If you do have big things to talk to your partner about, it can be helpful to do that with a third party present. That could be a therapist. It could be a coach like me. Someone who's trained to be there and be a facilitator when big things are being communicated about. And sometimes if you have a really big secret, um, you might need to lay some groundwork around that. Um, groundwork that's about the overall structure of your relationship and how you hold something major that's going on that has been probably brewing under the surface for quite a while. So those are moments when it can be great to bring in some help. And um, there are any number of therapists probably in your area <laughs> that you could work with, or you can visit my site and look at the coaching page and you know I'm happy to help you out as well. The point is get help from someone who is trained and can help you navigate those things in a way that's most likely to lead to success. And the way I define success in those circumstances is being at a place where neither you nor your partner has anything that you feel like you have to hide. Because from that place, you can actually get to know each other even better. You can connect more deeply. You can have compassion for each other. And sometimes you can have that dose of reality when you recognize the choices that you have made or that your partner has made and how you are part of this dynamic that is maybe creating circumstances that are less than ideal, not exactly what you would want. So we each, in a relationship, we each bear responsibility for those things. But the little point in leverage where it all begins is by a choice to be honest with each other and to find ways to introduce honesty that breathe life into your connection, and then to strengthen the container of your relationship so that it can truly handle whatever honesty you have. That's all I have for you today. It's obviously a big topic because some of the things that we wanna be honest about can be pretty darn uncomfortable. I encourage you to start with things that are a little more comfortable. In fact, you may notice that there are ways that you don't fully tell the truth where when you notice it, you're like, why did I do that? Like that makes no sense to me. Or if you're someone who doesn't encourage 
truth telling, then you may wonder like, why did I give my partner such a high t- hard time about that? Or why am I shying away from being curious about that? I know there's something up there. If you're trying to be curious, do it in a way that shows your partner that you are actually open to the answer on the other side, that they are safe answering your question. See if you can invite the answer so that your your partner isn't overly concerned with protecting you from the truth. But if it's something that is getting at like a core, let's say a core insecurity that you have, then you might point out to your partner like, I'm asking you this question. It's about something that you know I have a lot of fear around. So if the truth is something that's really going to be hard for me, let's find a way. Can you just tell me that? And then maybe we get help. Or maybe we can come up with a way to unearth the truth together in a way that... um that actually helps feel like we're supporting our relationship. Um, You know, if it's about something like insecurity, then the last thing you want is for your partner to feel controlled. What you do want is for your partner to feel some compassion for you and to to figure out a way to show up for you, not because they're being controlled by you, but because they love you and they want to show up for you and and they want you to feel safe and connected to them. So that's just one example. So many examples. And this episode could go on and on. But I think this is enough to digest for the moment. As always, if there's something that comes up for you and you want to reach out, you can email me, neilius at neilsatin.com, N-E-I-L-I-U-S. Or you can join the Relationship Alive community on Facebook. And there are plenty of people there who are supportive and want to participate in the conversation. And I'm there as well. And I would love to have you be a part of the community there. And otherwise, take care. I'm looking forward to hearing about your little mini doses of honesty and how they percolate out into the rest of your life. And I will see you next week with Harvel Hendricks and Helen LaKelly Hunt. In the meantime, take good care, and uh, I'll see you soon.